We're in a Mustang right now, going to tune a BMW. I know it doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense, actually. Take the most boring, reliable car to go tune the most unreliable, fun car. I'm just kidding, Shelby, you're not boring. Seeing as the car is going to be pushing like in the high 20s for a boost, uh, well, let's just say Big Boost himself had to come because the boost is very big. Hopefully bigger than it ever has been before and hopefully consistent. We don't want just Big Boost, we want Smooth Boost because before we had Erratic Boost. Right, Big Boost? What? Just like through all the boost side effects. <laughs> Once we get there, we'll go over kind of what we found the problems with the BMW were. Chris, long time no see. Hey. All right, I know there's like a million different things with a car that are new. You wanna kind of go like a brief rundown on everything that you guys have done over the past month? Yeah, um, so you know, we started taking a look as we were noticing some weird issues um, with Boost, and so we started taking a look at some of the components. We actually uh, went to a new TL blow off valve, uh, or sorry, wastegate, and we did um, graded stainless back lines to the wastegate and to the uh, boost pressure on the turbo and then AN fittings everywhere. I feel like we should probably mention that the wastegate was leaking and that's like why we had all the issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that seems to be the culprit is the wastegate was faulty and um, it was leaking straight out of the cylinder. So it was just causing a boost leak and it was really hard to modulate boost with like that. So can you like give a little bit of explanation how you figured out that the wastegate was bad? Cause I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, um, what I did was I was able to take the wastegate off and then I used a vacuum line with like an attachment for like a compressor fitting and I applied pressure to it and right around 20 pounds with this uh, wastegate springs, it's supposed to open. And if you maintain the 20 pounds, it should stay open. But what we noticed was that it was actually closing on itself, um, meaning that there was like an air leak. So we actually put in a bucket of water and, and repressurized it, saw that it was leaking from like the O-ring uh, for the plunger and just you know diagnosed from there that it was just a faulty wastegate. If you guys don't remember, the car was having issues where it had like very erratic boost and it would like make boost and then go it was no fun and it was like a tuning nightmare. Yeah, yeah, hard to tune, hard to drive. I looked on the computer, we've had 38 pulls on this dyno. Oh my God. Isn't that crazy? We've spent so much money on this dyno time. <laughs> Um, other than that, uh, solid tranny mounts, you, I think you said they're Delrin? Yeah, they're, they're Delrin uh, tranny mounts, they're just as hard as you can get before you go to steel, so it makes the car have a lot more tranny noise, so you can kind of hear the synchros, which I think is cool. Um, For me, I just like, I don't know if you guys remember when I was driving it on the track, you could see the shifter shaking back and forth a little bit which uh, was kind of an indication that it could use a little bit of an upgrade. Yeah. Especially because we do have like half of the motor was on like more of like a solid mount, like a poly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. With so, the motive kit, it like comes with a different engine mount. Yeah, so it was like solid mount on one side and then a good, you know, rubber mount on the other. So now we got Delrin. One of the big things we did too was the oil cooler that we put in the front bumper. So it'll keep our temps down when we're on the track and we're dogging the hell out of the car. Yeah, the only really issue with this car on the track was that the oil temps are getting kind of hot. It's just like a known thing. Even though this car does have the oil cooler, some 335s don't even come with oil coolers. Yeah, the 2007, the 2007 models don't come with oil coolers, so you have to like upgrade or retrofit. And I see that actually the 2007s, we had one come in, the fan on this guy's car wasn't working, and it was running like above 250, like normal operating temp. It was just kind of ridiculous, so I told him like, you know, you need to upgrade. If you have a 2007 model, guys, upgrade to an OEM oil cooler. I think Correct me if I'm wrong, I think the 2007 Sport packages came with an oil cooler. Possible. I yeah, think, I think. Possible. Or like the 08s didn't come with an oil cooler unless it was, I know the Sport package had something to do with the oil cooler for some of the cars. Yeah. Um, other than that, what else? What else? Was there anything else? I know that, I'll, I'll show them the trim in a second. Yeah, the trim is cool. Oh, um, all new under tray since they all like ripped off going yeah. 160 at uh, yeah. Sebring. Oh, and then we did um, some ADV oxygen sensors provided by Motive. Um, so they've got like an extra ground on them and I think they're just better built for like running ethanol. Yeah, because um, mine, like they, if you use the factory ones with this car, they just keep going bad when you have a single turbo. I think it's from all the extra heat. And yeah. Yeah, so at least the ADV ones, uh, as Jake told us, you know, they're supposed to work better with the kit. Cool. Um, Supposedly the car, Jake, when he was looking at the logs for the car for Motive, was saying it spools about 700 RPM sooner now, which is huge. Yeah. Like if, if that's true, then this car would be insanely more fun around town. Yeah. Because I was thinking about switching to a smaller turbo. Big turbo is good. Yeah, I know, but I like I like zipping around. Big turbo, yeah. big power. Yeah, but coming out of those corners at Sebring, it was kind of like a... Uh... <laughs> There's also a shop right down the street called Carbon Wraps. And while the car was at PSI, they stopped by and they wrapped my trim in gloss black and did a really nice job. 
if you remember, it was uh, kind of like that brushed aluminum, and I wanted to change it to black, so now we've got black trim. Look at that. Carbon Wraps does really, really good work. They're super well known around this area. Alberto, what do you think of the BMW on the dyno? Is the boost big enough for you yet? Let's get in there. It's getting there. How much weight is it running right now? I think it's at like a little bit over 20 PSI. All right. Yeah. How much do you want? I think we're gonna go up to maybe around like 28. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's a pretty big boost for a stock motor. You hating? I think we should just go straight to 40 pounds. That's yeah, he it. says the boost isn't big enough. Let's, pounds, let's go. Pounds, Mr. Big. Let's go until we start having a lot of timing corrections, and then we'll just dial back from there. Yeah, I think that. It's probably that, save a lot of time to do it that yeah, way. I'm not a pro tuner, but that definitely sounds like the best. Way yeah, to just add add more boost until it starts making weird noises, and then. <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? How do you know the limit until you find it? Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Jake from Motives tuning in remotely. This is the best news I've ever seen. It's time to play. That's what Martin said with my 240. He was like, all right. Everything's looking good. Now it's time to party. So it's going to be fun. at the graph you can still see it's doing weird fluctuation stuff this time Jake from Motive is almost convinced that there's still some sort of boost leak so he's gonna create some sort of boost leak tester and pressure test the system like 45 psi and uh, hopefully get it figured out so hopefully we'll be back ripping this thing in no time Alright guys, so I guess that's just how some things go sometimes and at least it seems like the wastegate's cooperating now and it's just a boost leak. So fingers crossed it'll get figured out soon. Um, I know this was just kind of like a short kind of random little update on the car but we're on a cruise right now, probably, I'm assuming based on when I upload this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the short little video and if you are bored go watch some of our old videos. We made videos when we were on a cruise so you could watch those videos if you want to watch cruise videos. Oh. Yeah, I dropped my camera earlier today, so it's not really working that well anymore. So hopefully all of today's footage works and came out nice. But say bye, Alberto. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. And <laughs> I will see you in two days.